Okay, let's look at some basic summary statistics. We can start with simple things like making frequencies. Right? If you need to figure out uh, frequency tables and those types of things, um, you just go to statistics, one-way frequencies, right? Choose your data set. I'm going to choose um, something better than 3.1. Right? Let's try 3.10 maybe. Then your analysis variable. Let's try 1985, see what happens. And let's just run it. You can see here that um, this data set has a lot of different values. Right? Very few of them show up more than once, as you can see from the histogram. So again, you need to ch kind of choose the correct uh, analyses for the correct type of data you have. So let's try with a different data set. Let's try this one and see what we get. So we've only got one numerical variable to choose from. It's kind of nice that um, SAS will only let you choose variables that you know work for that analysis. So we'll run this one. And now we get something that has a little bit better of a spread, but still a lot of singles, right? So it'd probably be best if you were going to run these types of analyses to first maybe recode your data and put them into categories, uh, kind of put them in bins, you know, classes. Now, something you might not um, recognize from this table is you're getting frequency, relative frequency, cumulative frequency, and then cumulative relative frequency. It's just relative frequency here is called percent, right? So the relative frequency of this one, it showed up one time out of the total. So that was 4%, right? This one showed up two times, which is 8% and so on and so forth. So these are relative frequencies just displayed as percentages rather than like a decimal or a ratio kind of thing. Next, we can look at uh, simple summary statistics for all the other kind of basic things that we're going to do with stuff. Again, choose whatever data you need. The nice thing here is it says analysis variables. You can add uh, more than one variable here. So let's do uh, this data set because it's got three good variables we can use. So I'm going to choose all three of these years as my analysis variables. And then if you go to options, you can choose what you want to get, right? So mean, standard deviation, these are just what is standard. This is what the default is. I also want, let's see, a median. Um, we can look under additional, right? We can get variance, mode, range. Um, you can do skewness and ketosis. You can also go down to percentiles. You can get your Q1 and Q3, right, the lower and upper quartiles, and all sorts of other things. Obviously, you can get the inner quartile range. And you can see that as we tick on these things, it adds um, commands over here. All right, let's run this. And here is our table with all of the stuff that we just ran. Now, maybe you want things in a different order, right? You'll notice that it goes mean, standard deviation, minimum, so on and so forth. And if you go to your code, mean, standard deviation, right, min, max, median, look at your output. So mean, standard deviation, then min, max. Mean, standard deviation, min, max. You see how it puts them in the order in which they were written on that line. So if you wanted them in a different order, just rearrange them over there. And then, for instance, if you wanted your five number summary to be in the order that a five number summary normally goes in, just rework it, right? So go to code, hit edit, and then we're going to do everything in the order. So we want Q1 and Q3, right? So you want min, then you want Q1, then you want median, then Q3, then max, right? And we can get rid of the median. We can get rid of Q1 and Q3. 
And now let's run this and see what happens. Now look how it rearranged it. We've got minimum, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, max. So there's our five number summary in the order in which we want it. We've got all this extra stuff, right? And we could, of course, get rid of those by just getting rid of them in the code or unticking their little boxes from the dropdown. But the bottom line is you can rearrange how these things are ordered to make the table go in the order in which you prefer. Let's say you wanted to run linear regression. Again, choose your data source, right? The dependent variable, the thing you're trying to uh, basically predict. Let's say we're going to predict what happened in 2002 based on what happened in 1985. You'll notice that the run isn't there. Code cannot be generated because the following requirements are not met. Add one or more effects to the candidate model, candidate model on the model tab. Okay. So where is the model tab? Where's the candidate model? Right. It kind of helps you figure out what you're doing wrong. So up here on the model, edit, add that. Okay. Now. The little run guy is ready. So you can see down here the model is 2002 is modeled on 85. Let's see what we get. Here's our data, right? Predicted value 2002. There's our line. Here's the input variable 1985, right? That's kind of our slope variable. The intercept, you can see that uh, we get analysis of variance, right? We get a, an F value and a very small P value. So these things are uh, strongly correlated, right? You get a, an R squared of 0.8, an adjusted R squared. Now down here, here's your parameter estimates of 0.8 and 14. That's basically giving you your um, regression equation and then it gives you all sorts of other stuff to tell you you know if the um, assumptions were met for running these tests right do you have um, normal distribution of error terms and all that kind of stuff but what's important here are the parameter estimates if you wanted to write the equation of the regression line this is your intercept 14.91 plus 0.82788 times the variable 1985, right? So you would take a, a 1985 um, amount, multiply it by 0.827, right? Add 14.91 to it, and that would give you the predicted amount in 2002. And that's kind of just the basics of linear regression. And those are all kind of the real basic descriptive statistics that you would run in SAS.